lecture on the Lotus Sutra by Jose Toda. Haben, Expedient Means and Jurio, Lifespan, Chapters. Revised for recording on June 2022 by Micah Deer. Forward. The Lotus Sutra is not merely represents all the teachings of Shakyamuni which were revealed for the period of 50 years since he had attained enlightenment. It also is the very sutra that fulfilled the ultimate purpose of his advent in this world. This is a universally acknowledged fact. Down in the Buddhist period of Zoho, middle day of the law, Tian Tai, the great teacher of China wrote, the Makashikan. In this commentary treatise, he interpreted the Lotus Sutra and developed his doctrine of Ji no Ichi Nen Sun Zen. In the current period of Mapo, the latter day of the law, the essence of the Lotus Sutra, is only found in the true Buddhism of Nichiren Shoshu, as is well testified by the prophecy of Shakyamuni himself. Nowadays, there are many lecturers on the Lotus Sutra in the world. For all that, some of them interpret the Supreme Sutra in the way of Tendai school, while the rest treat it with their minds preoccupied with Confucianism or other dogmas. They are all short of grasping or conveying the true meaning of the profound teachings, only leading the public astray. It is exactly as foretold by Dengio the Great in his Hoke Shuku, they will acclaim the Lotus Sutra. In effect, however, they will neutralize its true meaning. Jose Toda, the second chairman of the lay believers of Nichiren Shoshu, read the depths of the true meaning of the Lotus Sutra strictly in accordance with the Angi Kudan, the record of Nichiren Daishanan's oral teachings. He thereafter undertook lecturing on the essentials of the Sutra. His lecture on the Haban, Expedient Means and Juryo Lifespan chapters, which was formally called the First Class Lecture, lasted over seven years. This discourse proved to be as precious as gem. In fact, it has become an indispensable study for the lay believers members who practice within Nichiren Shoshu precisely as Nichiren Dai Shonen taught it. I sincerely wish to have the true meaning of the Lotus Sutra widely known, not only to the lay believers in Nichiren Shoshu but also to the general seekers for the true teaching, and thus to keep the great teachings for all humankind flourishing forever in its purity. Herein lies the reason for publishing this book to the world in an English edition. October 12, 1967. Daisaku Ikeda. Nichiren Shoshu Lay Believers Third Chairman. These were Daisaku Ikeda's words in 1967, however, after 1990 he changed his stand 180 degrees completely against Nichiren Shoshu who he incidentally also betrayed his predecessors, Sunezaburo Makiguchi and Josei Tota who were devoted practitioners of Nichiren Shoshu since the 1930s. The followings are Daisaku Ikeda's slanderous actions he committed after 1990. 1. Cut off the entire lay believers organization from Nichiren Shoshu priesthood, who they, for over 750 years, were the legitimate protectors of Nichiren Dai Shonen's teachings, so we all can practice this great teachings today. 2. He also discarded the Dai Gohanzen, the very life essence of Nichiren Dai Shonen's life, left by him for all mankind. 3. He also caused the entire lay believers organization to condemn and slander the entire Nichiren Shoshu priesthood. 4. He also created his own Gohonzon for his members and modified and shortened the recitation of Gongyo. Therefore, he committed the three cardinal offenses against the true teachings of Nichiren Dai Shonen. Anyone who follows in Daisaku Ikeda's footsteps is considered a slanderer of Nichiren Dai Shonen's Buddhism as well. Beware, these are not my words. These are from the written words of Nichiren Dai Shonen's from the Gosho about slandering the true teachings. Preface. The Lotus Sutra is a Buddhist scripture compiled in eight volumes, which containing 28 chapters. For those who attempt either to give or have a lecture on Buddhism, perhaps nothing is so difficult as to grasp the true meaning of these sutras. 
Shakyamuni, the Buddha who appeared in India, is known as the original teacher of the Lotus Sutra. At the beginning of his teaching, what later was recorded in the Sutra by his disciples, he declared that this doctrine was the ultimate reason for his advent. Then he went on to reveal all the esoteric causes of his enlightenment. In his pre-Lotus Sutra teachings, Shakyamuni adopted methods to fit the motives and capacity of the people, thus, helping them to better understand the teachings. However, in the Lotus Sutra, he forsook this conventional method. Instead, he taught in a unique mode which accorded with his own motives as a Buddha. This is one of the reasons why the Lotus Sutra is the most profound and at once, the most abstruse of all the sutras. Shakyamuni defined it himself as, the most incredible and the most recondite. The other reasons are as follows. The 28th chapter Lotus Sutra is doctrinally divided into two parts, the Shakuman, the first 14 chapters and the Hanman, the latter half. In the part of the Shakuman, Jino Ichi Nen Sun Zen, the theoretical principle of Ichi Nen Sun Zen, which means, the mutual possession of 3,000 life states in a single moment of life, is expounded according to the general aspects of life. In contrast, the Hanman part reveals Ji no Ichi Nen Sun Zen, the practical principle of Ichi Nen Sun Zen, according to the actual cause of the Buddha. Hence, the Hanman is called the true teaching, and the Shaku Man, the provisional teaching. Yet these two teachings of the Lotus Sutra, when compared with Nichiren Dai Shanan's teachings, are alike reduced to provisional teaching. The reason, in the period of the latter day of the law, the Lotus Sutra taught by Shakyamuni is invalid like the chaff of grain. And Sun Dai Hiho, the three great secret laws alone is valid or the grain itself. The Sun Dai Hiho had long been kept secret in the depths of the Juryo, lifespan chapter, until Nichiren Dai Shonen revealed it. Ultimately, therefore, Nichiren Dai Shonen's teachings are the only true teachings. This can be proven by observing the process of propagation of Buddhism after the death of Shakyamuni. In the period of Shoho, former day of the law ten centuries after Shakyamuni's death, Hinayana Buddhism spread during the first 500 years, followed by the spread of provisional Mahayana Buddhism which lasted for the latter 500 years. In the period of Zoho, middle day of the law another ten centuries subsequent to the period of Shoho, former day of the law. Tendai, Tiantai, the great teacher of China wrote three extensive treatises, Hake Ganji, Hake Mangu and Makashikan. In these writings, he interpreted the Lotus Sutra from every phase and angle, propagating the sutra in China. Nonetheless, Tendai the Great merely clarified the theoretical significance of the Lotus Sutra, Jinoichi Nen Sun Zen. Mm -hmm. Yet far from its practical significance, Jinoichi Nen Sun Zen. In other words, he elucidated the Lotus Sutra only in a theoretical way. Practical application of this profound sutra was not made by anyone. With the arrival of the period of Mapo, the latter day of the law, 2,000 years after Shakyamuni's death, Nichiren Dai Shonen made his advent in Japan. He propagated Buddhism strictly in accordance with the Lotus Sutra. On April 28, 1253, he initiated chanting Nam Myoho Renge Kyo, the core of the Sutra, mm -hmm. and finally, on October 12, 1279, established the Dai Gohanzen, the most important embodiment of the three great secret laws, for the salvation of all mankind from unhappiness and misfortune. The embodiment of the Dai Gohanzen was the ultimate purpose of the Dai Shanan's advent. For the Dai Gohanzen is the very original cause for all living beings to attain Buddhahood as well as for all sutras to acquire their appropriate meanings. Therefore, our object of worship is the Dai Gohanzen, and by no means the Lotus Sutra, the Havan, Expedient Means Chapter, or the Juryo, Lifespan Chapter. Then, how should faith in the Dai Gohanzen be practiced? 
As primary practice, we chant the Dai Moku, Nam Myoho Renge Kyo. As secondary practice, we recite the Haban, Expedient Means, and Juryo, Lifespan, Chapters. The Haban chapter for repudiations and quotations for sake. And the Juryo chapter for repudiations and utilizations for sake. Here, repudiation means to disprove the superficial meaning of the Expedient Means chapter. Quotation to cite its sentences to indicate the profound meaning of Nichiren Dai Shanan's Buddhism. And utilization to employ the significant teachings of the lifespan chapter latent between its lines. In the history of Buddhism, innumerable scholars have undertaken to lecture on the Lotus Sutra. However, during the middle day of the law period, no lecturer surpassed Tiantai the Great. Now in the latter day of the law, any lecture on this sutra must be based on Nichiren Dai Shanan's true Buddhism for the above-mentioned reason. The fact is, however, that most present-day lecturers still adhere to Tiantai interpretations. They must be disillusioned, for their fallacies which have caused the current chaos in Buddhism. Buddhism, Nichiren Shoshu believers alone, has maintained the true Buddhism of Nichiren Dai Shonen in its genuine purity. Over 750 years ago, with my inauguration to be the chairman of the lay believers of Nichiren Shoshu, I undertook the weighty task of lecturing on the Haban, Expedient Means and Juryo, Lifespan Chapters. I have since given these lectures over and over again to convey the true meaning of the Lotus Sutra. The study department of the lay believers has recently compiled a summary of my lectures for publication in a book form. This book represents my sincere wish for all readers to become able to comprehend the Lotus Sutra in its original significance. February 7, 1958. Jose Toda. Nichiren Shoshu Lay Believers Second Chairman. Side Note. Incidentally, Jose Toda has been and always will be Nichiren Shoshu believer, not an SGI believer, as Daisaku Ikeda and his misleading top leaders portray Jose Toda to their membership today. End of introduction.